Welcome, good morning everybody. This is the fourth episode of WEBS webinar Wednesday. Um, I see a lot of people coming in, a lot of people make themselves known in the chat panel already. It's good to, see, to have you all back this morning. Today we're talking about uh, a, a, a video in the commercial process together with Yanni from Vidyard. In a second we will introduce him. Um, as I said, this is the fourth episode of a, um, a series of webinars uh, we are hosting for commercial uh, marketing and sales professionals uh, because there were some challenging times these days. So we thought it's a good idea to have you all inspired and have you all in the room since we're all working from home. Um, some recap of the previous three uh, episodes we've had. Um, this is happening. We either survive these days, we're even adapting change, or we even grow our business. Um, for example, Zoom, Vidyard, and even this morning, the, the figures of Netflix are through the roof. Those uh, businesses are growing in these times. Mainly all the other businesses are adapting and some of them are surviving. So identify yourself. Where are you in this stage? This was last, uh, last week when we were talking about changing your commercial process. So how are you willing to adapt to these circumstances of COVID-19? Um, one of the biggest conclusions from the previous episodes was that sales reps turned into, uh, outside sales reps are turning into inside sales reps overnight. My name is Thijs van Rosmalen. I am one of the sales reps at Webs. Um, so I experienced this myself. So I want to point this out for now. Um, an advice we talked about, need to start learning the inbound sales techniques and need tools to execute this. And one of the most important tools in order to fill your pipeline on remote, get the right connections, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, is video, is the tool where we will talk about today um from my personal background in the past weeks i will show you a little bit uh, of examples so ask yourself how can you spend your precious time when face to face meetings are cancelled and are you enabled enough to continue your pipeline on remote video will be one of the tools to make sure you will succeed in these challenging days um, keep this in mind as a higher context for sales um, of course, you will identify your ideal buyer profile, you will get some cues, and especially in this connect phase, explore phase, and advice phase, where your contact with your future customers or existing customers are changing, we can use a lot of video here. From my personal perspective, this is where I frame every contact in, so I can use video for this, for example, in one-to-one -one sales connections, or, when I have a meeting, a Zoom call, I wrap it up in the explore phase by, uh, uh, with a video instead of 25 bullets in an email. Or even in my advice phase, when I present stuff to future customers, I use video, video, video. All tools to use to get the right cues in your conversation while everybody is on remote. But that's from my perspective, that's a sales perspective. Um, we should use video in the full customer journey, especially these days. And I'm very happy that he will join us today. Um, Yaniv Siegel, welcome. You are talking uh, uh, about the use of video in the full customer experience. Um, in a second, I, you will, I will hand over to you. Um, before this, some practical information. You're all muted, so we will um, uh, uh, use Yaniv's time uh, uh, well. So if you have any questions, let's use the next hour to answer them, but we do it with the chat pane. I will manage all the questions and we'll ask them to Yaniv. So we will make sure that everything will be covered. If not so, if we run a little bit of out, out of time, no worries, you will get uh, the chance to get a one-on-one -on -one with Yaniv or with me to answer all your questions right away. So. Um, that's enough for me. Uh, I'm, Yaniv, uh, I'm happy that you'd be here. So quick, uh, let's, let's start with you and uh, introduce yourself a bit to all these people. Perfect. Hello, everybody. Nice to see and meet you all. I'm sending my regards from Dublin, Ireland to wherever you are in, I believe, mostly Europe. My name is Yaniv. I'm a strategic partner manager at Vidyard. 
Um, I uh, opened the EMEA office here for Vidyard. Pre previously, I was part of HubSpot for three plus years. And I'm very excited uh, to be part of the session today and share some best practices and knowledge around using video in the full buyer's journey, right? In marketing, sales, and service, and especially in this contactless world that we're living in right now. So in a moment, I'll actually share my screen, share an agenda with everybody, and hopefully I can inspire you all to bring out your, if you will, in, inner Hollywood to start making videos yourself in a very easy way and show you some free tools that you can get started with straight away, okay? So without further ado, if that's okay with you, Tice, I'll take over from the screen and I'll yes, share please. my screen. Yes, all right. please. One moment. Can everybody, Tice, can you check? Everybody can see my screen, the main page here? Yep, yeah, yep, yeah, we're all Just good. making sure. All right, perfect. So, Bit of a cheesy title, six videos you need to create today. You're only three clicks away, okay? It's, it's, it's the rhyming title, but it is really the goal here to give you some insights in how to use video um, and how easy it is with free tools to create videos in so many different use cases that we're gonna be talking about today. So I'm very excited I'll be able to share those with you today. Before we do this, I'll ask everybody to open up their chat pane if they can. I'm gonna ask you three questions and please give your answer A, B, C, or D. First question, there's gonna be three questions. At the moment, how often does your company publish video content to existing or prospective customers today? A, B, C, or D. Please fill in your answer in the chat pane. All right, so we have a good mix. A lot of D's, a lot of C's, an occasional B, occasional A, or mostly D's and C's, as most of you will be able to see in the chat there. And we're all gonna loop back into why I'm asking these questions in a moment. Give maybe one or two more people a moment to find the chat, to give an answer. Perfect. Next question, second out of third, out of three questions. Question two, what prevents you from using more video in your communication strategy today? Have a look at these answers. And then once again, if you can type in A, B, C, D, E, or F in the chat pane, please. Couple Fs, a couple Bs. couple C's, an A here and there, so it's a variety. Quick question to the people that typed in F. If you want, can you give maybe in one sentence what that other reason might be? Just type that into the chat. As everybody else is answering here. Culture change needed, people aren't using it, okay? Slow internet connection at home. That's a fair point as well. Yeah. Marcelica says content calendar. So you already have it planned out. Just started using, still adapting. Jesper says have not felt the need so far. Yeah. In fashion, people want to touch examples. People are afraid. Yeah. No people who can do it. And so we see a bunch of reasons here as to what is currently preventing some of us are actually starting to use video. Fantastic. Thanks for those answers. Final question. If you were to start a video project today, what kind of project would that be? Preferably choose one out of these. If you have multiple, you can give multiple letters, but preferably choose one. Okay, it's a good mix. Yeah, we're seeing here answers across the board from product demos to webinars, to sales videos, to testimonials, to updates. Let's see if maybe one or two more people wanna give an answer and then we'll get started with the agenda. All right, I think we're good to go. Thanks everybody for those answers. We're gonna loop into all of these questions, right? As to what is currently holding us back also to use video. And I wanna introduce you to a very easy and cheap and very fast way to actually start using video. So the agenda for today, briefly, we're gonna to touch upon why video and especially right now. Secondly, we're gonna actually look at DIY video 
do it yourself video, what that is and what that means in the buyer's journey. Then we're going to look at six examples of where you can use that in your roles in various customer facing teams in customer service and support in sales and in marketing. Then I actually want to show you how easy it is to get started. Okay. In three clicks for free. Okay. The fifth piece is briefly, I want to touch on how you can then start measuring impact of video. If it's actually driving results for your, for your organization. And then finally, for the brave ones out there that want to get started with their a small contest to start making a video and I'll, I'll tell more about that in a moment okay so we'll start with why video especially now and it's interesting that Thais was literally just saying that in that introduction right that at the moment video consumption is soaring right and I just pulled up a bunch of articles mostly from within within Ireland but we see this basically worldwide partially it's to entertain our families and for the people that have, to have children to, to entertain them as they are living at home but we're seeing record level video consumption on netflix on the disney channel on youtube right on news channels right so what that means is that at the moment we are more primed than ever for video okay we have always been there's a cisco study coming out every year that says that by 2022, right, about 82% of all internet traffic is gonna come from video consumption. And we know that this is true, right? Because we're all, as we just said, on YouTube, about Netflix. Every second post on LinkedIn is a video. We're on stories all the time in our social environments. So what that means is that if you and I are constantly consuming visual content, so do our prospects, so do our customers, right? But then if we look at something interesting here, we bring this behavior and we look at what we are actually doing in that business space in B2B communication or B2C communication, we're completely lagging in keeping video out. Why? Right? There's a complete gap between we are, the way we prefer to consume content by the masses and the way we actually are using visual or content in our communication when perspective and existing customers in a business environment. That's a very big gap. Yeah. And what I'm gonna to introduce to you in a moment is a way actually to start bridging that gap and introducing video in various channels to actually meet the type of content that people are wanting to consume most right now, which is visual video content right now, and bring that into a business set, okay? A couple other stats that I wanna show you here. I'm gonna get a pointer, I'm not gonna go through everything. We just talked about that 82% of internet traffic is projected to be video-based within two years probably this whole COVID situation is going to accelerate that, okay? The marketers among us that are here already know that video is important for a strategy. And many of you, when you, when you answer the question, hey, how often are you using video? Even though some of you are maybe just doing it once a month or once in a while, the majority of you are still doing it, right? Because you're realizing that your customers want some type of video consumption, either on social or on your website, right? Then a lot of marketers are also saying that video actually converts better. Right, that it actually drives more leads and MQLs, and that it helps here, this 90% say that customers, it helps them tremendously to make buying decisions, and they choose companies who have visual content to aid them in their journey to actually make a purchasing decision, way more over companies that don't have this visual content. And then another phenomenon what we're seeing is, is that more and more salespeople are starting to use video in their prospecting process, and throughout the sales process to humanize that sales outreach especially now when we're all sitting at home and we can't meet people face to face. People are looking for video solutions to connect on a human level and build trust remotely, okay? So what we're going to do right now is before we, we, we look at some examples, and this is looping back to what a lot of you were saying, right? What is currently preventing us from using more video? A lot of, uh, a lot of us are saying too expensive, takes too much time. There are no human resources internally. It's not something for our target market. We have enough videos, right? Um, or we don't have enough content to, to write things about. These are all very valid arguments. However, I wanna introduce you to a concept which basically removes a lot of these bottlenecks for a lot of organizations at mass, okay? And that is do-it-yourself video. We'll look at some examples in a moment and actually how to do it yourself. So what do-it-yourself is, is literally what it says. Do it yourself, which means it's super cheap, okay? It's very easy to do. You can do it with a webcam or on your phone. It's very fast to actually start creating videos on the spot. It has very high impact, and what I mean with high impact is we can measure the engagement of these types of videos of do it yourself. 
And it doesn't matter if your organization is in B2B, B2C or B2G, business to government, it's all business to human, B2H, or actually H to H, human to human, right? That's why this works really well. And if you're thinking to yourself, oh, well, well, DIY, that people are not gonna watch that and it's bad quality and my company pr presents quality and, and I don't know if this works. Let me put a reminder of what we like to consume on a mass level in our own free time. Cat videos, that's the bar of video quality that we watch by the billions worldwide right now for some weird reason. There's a funny documentary on Netflix on the appeal of cats and cat videos. But what I'm trying to say with this is, is that these videos are being watched all over the world, billions. And these are typically very low quality videos that are being created with home phones, and yet they engage millions and billions of people worldwide. So if we love to create and watch those types of videos, we can definitely use the same motion to bring these types of videos into a business environment as well, which is DIY video, do-it-yourself video, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at six DIY examples for all customer facing teams. So for marketing, sales, and service. And what we're actually gonna do, and a lot of you will be familiar with this, is this is HubSpot's flywheel, right? Which is basically a unified way of all customer facing teams working together to attract, engage, and delight customers, right? And if we do that in a seamless way, we make a flywheel spin faster, which just helps us to accelerate growth within our business, okay? So we're gonna look at examples within the delight phase, right? Which is customer success, customer service, account management. We're gonna look at sales example in the engage phase, how to engage to get customers over the line. And we're gonna look at the marketing phase. So we're gonna actually start at what many of you will know, the most important part of the flywheel and often overlooked part of the flywheel, which is the delight phase, customer service, customer support, account management, and actually helping and dealing with your customers and giving them a, a special experience that make them ambassadors of your company. Because we all know that a customer that loves your company and brand is the person that's gonna tell their friends, family, and colleague about how amazing your company is. It's the best marketing tool we have to generate growth in our business. So I'm gonna start with video examples in actually the delight phase, which is a complete blue ocean in so many organizations, but can have such high impact. So that's what we're gonna get started with, okay? So in the delight phase, what we're going to do is, the first example is customer communication, okay? And what I mean with customer communication, there is, uh, as examples, there's a bunch of examples that we can start using. We're gonna break this example into three thresholds, okay, into three buckets, if you will, okay? The first bucket, why you should consider starting using video in your tech support, in your customer service, in your account management, I'm bundling these all together, is first of all, it's a huge time saver and money saver for your organization, okay? What you're seeing here right now at the top here, it's way easier to make a short video to explain how to tie a bow or how to do something in a machine than it is to write that out in text. A lot of you come from B2B companies, right? Or at least companies with considered buying processes and relatively complex products or services that have many components to it, right? For a lot of you, that will mean that video is such a powerful tool to make what you're doing for customers very transparent. So what we can start using video for, do-it-yourself video for, is to actually increase the, what we call first call resolution metric, okay? Meaning, instead of going up and down 10, 15 emails, right? Trying to find text and all this ambiguity, some customer is struggling with a specific point in the software or is not understanding how to do something in a manual you sent them. Instead of going up and down, wasting time in not understanding each other, people make videos, make it super transparent and easy. One, two minute videos to give answers to help with problems. And that means it also reduces the average handling time or ticket response rates of people that actually come in with specific questions or queries. What we see a lot of organizations start doing, and a lot of you are already doing this within your organizations, is creating knowledge bases, right? A lot of you will have text-based knowledge bases for those frequently asked questions so your customer can self-serve and find their own answers, right? Or deflect those questions that are always the same, deflect them to, knowledge, to a knowledge base. We see more organizations start using video in case deflection. So what we're doing is we're creating a knowledge base of how-tos, of explainers, 
of mini demos, right? All these types of videos that help our existing customers get most out of the products and services that they've purchased from us. Yeah? So what that does is it, it helps us actually be more transparent and it creates a better customer experience for our customers because we make it easier for them to actually solve problems or actually um, adapt and use our products and services better. Okay. A second use case, and it's connected to that, which is other than saving time and money, is increasing CSAT, right? Just customer satisfaction. So what, a thing that I wanna highlight here is, is think about it for yourself. And th think for yourself, and I'm willing to, to bet who has ever received a video from a account manager or a customer support or a customer service rep once you're going through a bad experience with that company. I'm willing to bet none of you. And I have never have so had something like that ever, right? When maybe something didn't work or it bre broke or it went offline or it disappeared or something really bad happened detrimental to my business, right? I have never had a human response from somebody in that company saying, look, I'm so sorry that you're going through this. You have problem A, B, C. This is what we're trying to do, which is solution X, Y, Z right now. In order to help you out, we might give you a discount or some free stuff or maybe help you to mitigate this problem. Think about how that would feel for a customer that is going through a very bad experience and now suddenly sees a human, a real face that is showing, look, I understand you have a problem. I'm very sorry. Let me try to solve this for you. We have customers that have actually started adopting this for deal case resolution. And instead of now having a bad experience, it now gets flipped into a positive experience where people are sharing that video and saying, look, this is how you do customer service. Or this is how an account manager should be working. They showed themselves, they showed and, and showed empathy and humbleness and are trying to solve the solution. Very powerful. And no one in the industry is doing this right now. The second piece is, I'm talking now about a bad experience, you can do the same thing with video for good experiences. If your customers become successful, right? You as an account manager or a customer success manager or a customer service manager can send a video saying, hey, fantastic, congratulations on doing so well with the products and services and reaching your goals. I'm so happy for you. Let's get in touch and see if we can help you get more out of this. Humanize that customer communication process, right? So this is what brings us, you're going the extra mile in a unique way that no one is doing right now with less effort typically, because it's just a quick two, three minute video of smiling, being friendly and being open and try to connect. Talking about delighting a customer in a unique right, way right now for them to start talking about how amazing that experience is, okay? And then thirdly, you're also respecting a lot of people's time. Asynchronous video, especially now, and you will recognize this, I, I do, I mean, I'm on Zoom calls probably seven, six, seven hours a day. I'm fatigued sometimes from Zoom calls and it takes me away from being productive some days, right? So what these videos do, especially also in sales and marketing, but especially in customer support and service and account management, customer reps can send a video, right? And say, hey, look at it at your time whenever you have a moment, in the evening or when just before or after lunch. You don't have to jump on a call with me to actually go through a whole situation. Here's a short answer to your question. Have a look at it at your own time. So you give people time back. It's what we call asynchronous communication, okay? There's a third use case which is connected as well to customer satisfaction and that is engaging ambassadors. So what we see customers actually using, they're creating video testimonials of their best performing customers. So they are identifying their most loyal fans and their most loyal customers and then sending videos to them and sh doing shout outs to them on social media to make them feel even better about themselves, the end customers. Won't get too much into that because it's very much connected to what I saw before, told, said before. What I wanna show, which is very interesting, if you're thinking, okay, so how does that really impact right, my organization? This is a very interesting study done by a software company in the States called Sunday Sky, where they looked at using personalized videos. So these types of videos that we're gonna look at or we looked at in Fortune 500 companies, okay? So what they did is they did a research over a, lot, a large group of 28,000 respondents, where what they did is they looked at the average company NPS. NPS for the people that don't know, um, I don't wanna assume here, NPS means net promoter score. And what net promoter score basically means is the likelihood that a customer is going to refer you to a friend, family, or colleague, or recommend you, okay? Typically, it's a scale between minus 100 
and plus 100. Minus 100 means no one recommends you. Plus 100 means all your customers recommend you. Okay, so in this study, what we saw is that the, this was the average company NPS of these Fortune 500 companies. Then what you're seeing here is this is a program NPS where they started using video in their customer experience for customer resolution, um, to resolve tickets, to praise people that are doing well, and they measured the NPS of that specific program. So the average aggregate of net promoter score increase because of using video in the customer experience grew by an aggregate average of 48 points. That's huge. That means that so many people are actually driving the experience and actually saying, wow, they sent us personal videos that actually drove and gave us a, a very personal feeling, right? And actually, because of that, people will start recommended those companies. And here's a bunch of snippets. I won't go through these, but, but these are also real life snippets of people that said, hey, love the personalized greeting, for example, or Love the personalized video. It pretty much sums up everything you need to know. I love it. I work in IT, and this is exactly what companies should be doing to communicate with their customers. Great work. So these are real-life snippets there. So before I go into the engage phase, a lot of you, not, not a lot of you might be in customer um, success, right? Many of you are marketers. Some of you are... In, in, in sales, obviously. So I just want to bring it back and what is going to be relevant for all your roles, right? A lot of you that are in sales typically will not just be doing outbound sales, but they also deal with customers, so account management. So these examples are very relevant for you to actually create that communication as an account manager, especially while you're sitting home right now. All the customer support and tech people that are actually resolving support tickets and questions that come in, perfect fit. And for marketers among us here, you can actually enable sales and customer support and account management teams with created, with create, for example, pre-made videos to answer frequently asked questions, right? Or specific mini demos that can, then the support teams or sales teams can then start sending to their customers to solve specific problems. So your marketing can actually start enabling these other teams here to start using video, okay? So before I go into um, the engage phase, and specifically focus on sales. Thais, I want to take a moment to stop here. Maybe you want to go off mute, see if there's a bunch of questions uh, coming from the chat that I can answer for now. Yeah, we had one question uh, so far. Um, yeah. While answering that, uh, I will give everybody the time to, to, to answer your questions now so we can use the moment. Um, but Zoe asked in the beginning, you showed some <laughs> impressive digits on uh, numbers mm. on on why uh, we should video what will it improve etc cetera, etc cetera. Yeah. Um, and she was actually asking uh, what what were the uh, where are these numbers based on and yeah. Rainier already answered that it might be the uh, video and business report benchmark of 2018 um, so yeah so partially it comes from our so we actually released our video benchmark of 2020 now already so a lot of that comes from there and uh, Zoe in the end of this deck is a bunch of resources including research from all the places where we get all these statistics and information from that we base this presentation on so you'll get that deck and you'll have access to all that information there okay awesome that's cool um, so there are no other questions for now so uh, let's continue perfect oh, there's one Okay. Coming in right away. Are you sure. talking about personalized video per individual customer or per type of topic dash problem? The question from Lorena. So can you repeat that question? Are you talking about personalized video per individual customer or per type of topic or problem? Um, it, this, this research that we talked about is the communication to end customers. So they aggregated a variety of use cases and the NPS score is a blended average of a variety of use cases there. The research actually also breaks down then into the various topics and the various use cases which have a, ver a ver varying um, impact on NPS score. What I showed is the aggregate there, which was on a customer, so company to customer basis communication. Yeah. Cool, okay, go ahead. Perfect, great. So now, for the salespeople, especially among us, but also for the marketers and the account manager among us, I wanna focus on how to actually start using video in the engage phase. And some of you will already be familiar with this. Um, and so specifically how salespeople can start using video, especially in this contactless world, to actually get more of these MQLs and SQLs that marketing is working so hard to create and start using video as a unique tool 
to bridge from an MQL to actually an opportunity generated by breaking through the noise of all these cold calling calls and emails and emails that get ignored and deleted on masses. We can actually cut through that noise and start using in the sales process. And why that's relevant here is this is HubSpot state of inbound. If you look at the sales side of things, the, by far, the, oh, and this already has been for the last three years, the most challenging part of the sales process by far is always it's hard to get in touch and connect with prospects. It's hard to actually get a foot in the door. This is where video comes in, right? So there's two use cases on the sales side. One is prospecting and one is throughout the sales process. So we're first going to look at using video in the prospecting process, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually play an example first, and then I'll talk a little bit about why it's so impactful and why it actually works so well, okay? So I'll just go out of present mode for a moment. I'll turn off my headphones here for a moment so everybody can hear it on the screen. Hi, mate. So just for everybody to preface this, this is an example of me mock prospecting someone at HubSpot, okay, that I want to have a conversation with. They registered for a webinar. That's the trigger, okay? Let's have a look at it. Hi, Nathan. Good morning. How are you doing? It's uh, Yaniv here, Vidyards. I uh, hope all is well with you over there at HubSpot in the UK and uh, that you're keeping healthy and safe and uh, that you're watching this video in a comfortable location in your house, being at your office desk. Maybe it's a cupboard, maybe it's a bedroom, uh, but either way, I hope you're getting through these times okay. Uh, reason for the reach out in the video is I saw that you had registered for our webinar um, where we help customers and people in our network with giving them tips and suggestions how to actually get through these specific times in terms of marketing and communicating with their customers but also how to work specifically with a remote workforce um, we have a lot of data and best practices on what works really well specifically from for software companies similar to hubspot uh, so that's why i thought hey let me reach out to you and ask what is currently a focus for you uh, going through these times in your communication with end customers and maybe within your own remote team uh, I would love to see if I can give you some data and insights on what we see works really well and help you further there. Uh, that's really the goal to see if we can help you uh, through these specific times. So I will actually put my calendar link in the end of the video. Find 10, 15 minutes whenever you're available. Uh, and then I look forward to see if I can give you some insight and best practices on what we see works really well and hope that's valuable for you too. For now, I wish you a great day over there in the UK. Cheers from Dublin. Stay safe and be in touch. Bye-bye. All right, one moment. I'm going to just switch back here to present mode. Just give me a second. I'll take a moment to load here. Okay, so this was an example. I specifically showed, um, try to show an example here, a little bit more relevant for the time we are in right now, less salesy. Um, I, I got some feedback when we looked into this and especially when we were doing this in the Netherlands that it might have been a bit too friendly, right? Or too, too close to people um, from a personal, from a business perspective. But why I'm showing that specific example is at the moment we wanna lead with empathy, right? And we wanna lead with understanding someone's situation and trying to be helpful. Why this video, these types of videos work so well in COVID, but obviously also outside of this whole era when we all get back to the situation is that this is a game changer in terms of cutting through the noise, right? For the salespeople among us, right? If you think about the amount of prospecting video or emails that you're sending with text, right? Or LinkedIn messages, how much of that gets ignored and deleted? The amounts are huge, okay? And we have data that shows, the, and, and for the decision makers out there or the leaders here, maybe the managers that are part of this webinar or, or the leaders that will see this afterwards, you know that this is true, right? You get probably, and we know we have statistics that show that leaders in various industries that both Vidyard and HubSpot work with will receive anywhere between 50 and 100 prospecting outreaches a week, right? LinkedIn messages, emails, the majority of that gets ignored big time. Right? Probably most of you leaders see those messages instant delete. 
right? So what we need to do is we need to find a unique way that cuts through that noise. There's a pattern interrupt in someone's inbox, in someone's email, or in someone's in-mail that immediately humanizes the process, shows your face, show that you're a human, and then try to be helpful in the actual video message. So we have data that then shows, and there's a bunch of, and all these case studies are hyperlinked, so you'll be able to look at it in various companies, in software, in manufacturing, in professional services, where we see a bunch of stats regarding the growth in engagement rate. So we see, this is a case study of HubSpot itself. We see that out of 100 prospecting emails that were being sent, up to 77% of those people actually engage with the video. Which is huge. So out of 100 people, 77 people click on the video and watch the video at HubSpot. Okay, we see an aggregate average of a click-through rate between 50 and 77, 76% actually, on average for companies in terms of click-through rates of using a video in your sales process for prospecting. Then what's more important is actually the growth in reply rate and meetings rates. So when HubSpot started using this, and this is where I why I also work at Vidyard. I was the first person doing this at HubSpot back in 2016. Okay. And I started actually seeing a four and actually a five to even six X of meetings booked because I started using video in my outreach to prospects, making me stand out from all my competitors that were not doing this right now, immediately setting a communication that then also drove way more meetings booked into my calendar, which then also meant that that impacted the amount of opportunities and the amount of deals closed. So have a look at this case study. It's a very uh, thorough case study in terms of all the motions that were being done with HubSpot, not just in sales, but in other teams too. And then have a look at the bunch of other companies that are saying the same things. A, a very strong growth in click-through rates, reply rates, and meeting booked rates, which is the, the goal, basically from a prospecting perspective, what you want as a sales rep, right? You have as many meetings booked in your calendar. Okay. So that's where prospecting comes in. The second piece a video, right? One is in prospecting to get a foot in the door, make that human connection. And there's a lot more research and, and um, on the prospecting side that I won't get into today, but I will send it in the resources so you can learn more about best practices of how to use video in the prospecting process. The second piece, however, is to use video throughout the sales process. So we see more and more sales organizations that are now starting to use video in many different use cases. The most popular one, and the one that I would recommend most sales leaders and sales uh, executives here to actually execute on, is to send a video together with your proposal or with your quote, okay? That's the number two use case that we see sales reps are using videos for, okay? So, I wonder, there might be here and there a person that is already doing this, but this is still a very um, uncommon process to do. And it is so impactful to do it for two reasons. First of all, you make it completely transparent, right? Hey, Mr. Prospect, as we discussed, this is the start date. These are the terms. This is what you're purchasing. Click here on purchase. And the next step will be, we're gonna start onboarding. Makes it super transparent. But what's more important why this works so well is, and we'll all recognize this, is, and that, for salespeople, we hate that stuff, right? We send a proposal or a quote, and then it goes into that behind, you know, into an invisible boardroom meeting where the person that you, the person that you have been speaking to is going to then try to internally sell your solution to the CFO or to the CEO or to the whole management team. So we lose complete control there typically as salespeople if we haven't been able to loop them in into our conversations, right? If it's just text, you know what the CFO will do, right? They will go to the last page. They look at the price. They're like, okay, no, thank you. Bye-bye. It's over-exaggeration, but it definitely happens a lot, right? So what video does really well is it helps you gain a little bit more control in those behind-door conversations by doing this, right? So you have a contact person that you have been dealing with. You're saying, look, contact person, how about I make a video for you where I'll recap what we've been talking about, walk you through the proposal and the pricing, and then show and send that to everybody in your team. The management team. So everybody's aligned to what we discussed. So the video includes, these are your pains, Mr. Prospect. This is our solution and how we can help solve it. This is the price that justifies the pain that we're solving for you. And then send it on and say, hey, how about you share that with the CFO, the CEO, or maybe the management team or the boardroom that's actually making this decision. And then the funny thing is, the interesting thing is, is that you start getting notifications, right? So you see suddenly the videos being watched five or six times. So you know people are watching it, which is great because now everybody's aligned on what you have been talking about. 
Very powerful use case. A second very powerful use case is actually using it in so many other situations. And Thais was mentioning this briefly as well, is after maybe a discovery call or a meeting that you've had on Zoom, now on Zoom, but in the past or and later also on face-to-face, -face, a recap video. Hey, Mr. Prospect, it was so great meeting you. Thanks for having me in your office. I understood that you have problem ABC. That's exactly what our product and services solve. I'm looking forward to our next step where we do a deep dive demo or we do a solution presentation for you and see if we can move this further. Send. I guarantee you very few to none of your competitors would be doing something like this right now. So what this does is you're doing something unique in the sales process that the others are not doing. You're making the process human transparent throughout. Okay. There's other use cases like doing mini demos. So for example, instead of, um, especially for the ones that are selling software or products that they can show, right? Because it's not always relevant. It can also be um, actual manufacturing products or machines, right? So you can do a walkthrough of a large machine and highlight specific functions of a machine, right? You can do that too. It doesn't have to be software, but the whole idea is it needs to be something that you can show, right? Um, why that works really well is sometimes you'll have an initial meeting and then you'll get an email with eight questions from your prospects. Can you do this? Can you do that? How does this work? How does that work? How does this work? And a lot of you will now be doing and start typing an email this long answering all the questions, right? How about you just make a short video and answer all those questions really quickly in a very transparent video. This is how you do this. This is how you click and find this. This is how we build a workflow for you here. This is how this piece of machinery works here. Removes ambiguity, moves the deal forward without you having to go to another meeting to actually show and answer all those questions. So what it does is it shortens sales cycle significantly. Okay. So those are a bunch of use cases that you can start, can start thinking of when starting using video throughout the sales process with the focus of making it transparent, shortening a sales cycle because you can move a deal forward without the necessity to wait for the next meeting. Right? And you make the actual buying process transparent for people, which is something that a lot of people love especially because a lot of them don't know how to buy your product or service. So you guide them with the video step-by-step step how to do it. Super powerful. And then finally here, attract and educate. So I won't get too much into this, to be honest with you. I know a lot of you are marketers. And the reason why I'm not doing this too much right now is there have been a ton of webinars out there in the last couple of weeks about how and why you should go from offline to online, right? and a lot of information, blogs, videos, et cetera, that have been out of there. So I, I don't want to re rehearse what a lot of people um, has already, have already seen in many things, but I will touch upon two points. So Thais, I took your picture there. Hope you don't mind. <laughs> so um, first thing, as an example, that you can start using DIY video again, right? Do it yourself video is in network communication. So Thais, um, for almost every time that we have these webs webinar Wednesdays, he makes a short video on LinkedIn, spreads it to his community, right? Thousands of people watch it. And because of that, a lot of you are at this webinar today, right? So this is a very easy way. And he is, I, I believe, I'm not sure if it's in your home, but it's in a similar setup as, as what you're in right now, but it's super effective in communicating with your network. It doesn't have to be a high level video marketing production. It could be a very simple video with a very powerful message, okay? And the second screenshot that you see here on the right is I actually also made a video on the landing page itself. Some of you have seen it because I get the notifications that you saw it, right? Which is me inviting you and telling you what this webinar is going to be about. So communication once again with you as people that we can help and educate and, and inspire, okay? Very powerful and very easy to do with DIY communication. You don't need production value for this, you don't. And then the fifth, and this has been rehashed all over the place by so many organizations, is you can do DIY webinars and online events. So we use Vidyard. So obviously for some things like this, Zoom is in our opinion, the, the best tool out there for, for live webinars like these. But we have like small webinars or small trainings where we actually record it with our free tool and then just put it up and put it in an email, which is just an educator, right? Um, to learn about a specific tool or maybe a breakfast session where you can use a free tool to actually record something without the necessity to set up a whole big webinar. And we obviously know the, the benefits of why webinar and online events are so effective, right? Higher turnout, first of all. I mean, we have over 100 people signed up, right? And, and, and made in, in a week, right? Very short, way cheaper. We can do multiple sessions, obviously, and create these sessions on demand. 
you have lead generation opportunities, right? Because you can gate this type of content. And because you're hosting it online, you can also start measuring video and event ROI. Right? Compare that to an offline event. Sometimes very difficult to measure the ROI of an offline event, right? Or of a conference. But of an online event, you can really see, all right, who registered for a specific demo or a specific webinar? And did they then start talking to me as a customer, to me as a prospect, and did they become a customer? Now we can attribute that webinar as the driver of somebody becoming a customer three to six down, months down the line. So we can now start measuring revenue and ROI of what we're actually doing. Okay. Final example, before I show you the tool and literally in two minutes how to click and make a video from scratch. It, and this is not really customer facing, but this is something that I would recommend all of you to do it. We have a campaign right now, which is called One Less Meeting with Vidyard. Um, basically because we're all and and some of you will be as well are zoomed out i mean we're on zoom calls all the time taking time away from us so our message is literally would you rather be on a half hour call with a lot of chit chat right and talking about the backgrounds again etc which is nice in the beginning or would you rather have the sales leader or the marketing leader maybe send a two three minute video recapping the main points that need to be discussed sending it on to their team and letting them watch it whenever they have a moment to watch it Asynchronous communication. So what this does is we actually give time back to people to be productive. Instead of forcing them to come on long meetings and calls, we can make short videos where leaders can spread the same type of message in a very short moment. So HubSpot, for example, our managing director, or when I was still at HubSpot, now also my CEO at Vidyard, we send out um, constant videos, short three, four minute videos with updates, what we're doing with COVID, or a specific thing that happened, or a new product feature, et cetera. Internal communication, you can use that for free. A second use case is to collaborate with your team. You don't have to be on a Zoom call all the time to share what you have been doing. You can make a short video and say, hey, I have actually done X, Y, Z. Can you help me do with ABC, for example? Okay. That was the final example. What I want to do now, in the last couple minutes here, show you how to do it, okay? It's very easy. So first thing for everybody is um, that don't know about this yet. So um, Chrome, so we have a Chrome extension, completely free. You can make unlimited videos, okay? Unlimited length for free, okay? So we have no caveats to that whatsoever, okay? You can download it and it's a little Chrome widget which we call our, um, our VBOT, okay? So that's the first thing you should do. Then once you have that widget, you can then go to a website. I'll just take HubSpot as an example. First step, what you do is you click on the robot here, on the VBOT. What it then immediately does is create a video layer over your website, DIY video. So salespeople can use it, right? Because they can start using it for prospecting. Marketing people can start using it for their network communication. And service and support people can start using it to record frequently asked questions or do a mini demo. So you can do yourself in the corner or you can do cam only if you just want to show yourself and, and, and uh, for example, so resolve a problem or like guys did make a video to communicate to your community, right? Or, and, and to your network. Okay, so that's, that's step one, you open it. Step two then, just give me a moment. Step two is we're actually gonna click record. Okay, so we'll then choose our screen. What I will then now, now start doing is three, two, one. And now we're recording, ready to go. Right, so we're actually waving and we're actually, we're able to record here. Here in the bottom, you'll see it counting down. At the bottom right, the moment you're done, you can press stop. And now what it will automatically do is it's going to create a shared video page, ready for you to send, done. So click one, you open it, you open the tool. Click two, you press record and click three is stop. And then immediately you have a video ready to go. And this is the video, okay? So there it is. So, and then I can say, hi, Thais, short video for you, for example, okay? And then I can put it in an email if I want, copy the link in the thumbnail to put it in an email. I can share it on LinkedIn. I can share it on Twitter. I can put it on YouTube if I want to, okay? Um, so that, that's it. So it's very easy for you to do. And all the use cases that we looked at, you can use this for. So just to recap that, customer support and service people and account managers can start using this 
to communicate, to resolve a problem, maybe show in the background a screen of a, a demo page or answer or show a knowledge article. Salespeople can use it for prospecting to have the website in the background or maybe your prospect's LinkedIn profile or a blog article that that person wrote. They can also, in the sales process, make videos to do proposals, right? To make a video proposal or to send out mini demos. And then marketers can use these types of video to communicate with customers or to even make full on webinars. You can make a one hour recording, which you can then pull up, put up and have as a webinar ready to go. Okay. And that's always free tooling. Okay. So that's why I wanted to show that it's easy to do with three clicks, which we're, we are here getting started. Um, the final piece, but I won't get into it now too much, is the measure impact side of things. So with the free tool, don't um, the, the right side is actually not relevant, but the free tool here will then start giving you notifications when people watch your video. Only, by the way, if you know the email address of the person and we can cookie them. So I will be able, as a salesperson, see who is watching my video. If I know somebody watched my video 100%, I'm on the phone five minutes later. Hey, Thais, it's me. I saw you watch my video. What do you think of my acting skills? And he'll be like, what, what are you stalking me? And I'm like, yes, I'm stalking you. What do you think of it? And then we have a conversation, right? Um, or you can use it as a customer support, right? You send videos, you make all these frequently asked questions, and you can actually check, are my, are my customers actually looking at the solution that I sent them or not, right? So you can refer, say, hey, have a look at this video because this is actually going to solve your problem. So you can start measuring the actual results by measuring the engagement, okay? So before I go into the last piece, which is the contest, okay, let's see if I can answer a couple of questions. I saw the chat popped up yes. a couple of times. Nice. Thank you, Anif. We have two technical questions. Great yes. uh, demo. The, ease, the easiness of making the videos is, 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 is amazing. Um, we use it a lot at webs as well. Yeah. Um, and, but there can, there can be some objectives, uh, objectives mm -hmm. within, uh, uh, objections, sorry, within mm -hmm. the organization. So Peter is asking, what if your IT policy does not allow you to use a Chrome extension? Is there any way to, one, either use it differently, and two, uh, do you have some documentation to, um, to, to, to help the, <laughs> Peter uh, uh, use Fitjar for, uh, for his IT department? Yeah, so, so fair enough with IT departments, if they have restrictions on using Chrome, that makes it difficult because this tool is Chrome enabled. Um, and, and so it will be via Chrome. Your alternative to this is, and this, uh, you can do this with IT, but you, salespeople can do it as well. But this is also uh, restricted. You can use our app, which is only for iPhone. So we're building our Android one. So if you have an iPhone, you can use it and just use it with a stand and make a recording of whatever it is that you want to do on your phone. So that is the alternative of it. If you have a restriction with Chrome, it's going to be difficult to do it. That, that's a reality um, that, okay. um, that we're dealing with. And when is it stored? Where, sorry, where is it stored? Yeah, so we have a, so we have a library. So when you create your Chrome extension, it will automatically create a Vidyard account. That is basically a personal repository of all your videos, kind of like your personal YouTube um, of all your recordings that you've made. And you can use unlimited amount of, of, of videos, you said. You Correct. can record Correct. Uh, an unlimited amount, but uh, you're a commercial organization as well. So Martin is asking, when is the tool no longer for free? Yeah, so there, there are a bunch of use cases where it's not for free. I won't get into that right now. If, if it's something, Martha, that you think is interesting, um, send me an email and I can send you some information on it. I have a separate um, video there that I can show the exact differences between free and paid. There's a bunch, uh, but I won't get into it right now because yeah. it defeats the purpose of everybody getting to use the free tool and get started with it. Yeah, and for example, I'm doing this for, I think, almost two years now and I don't even use a paid account yet. So uh, you have seriously unlimited amount uh, uh, of possibilities or it is right. limited, but I don't need to use it. So you can do a lot with the free tools. It's, it's, correct. it's, it's correct. amazing. That, um, correct. Let me check. There was one more uh, questions. Uh, one more question around uh, the GDPR. Like um, uh, Mark is asking, it's a great tool. But um, what in terms of, of GDPR regulations here? Yeah, so if you want, Mark, send me an email as well. We are completely GDPR um, compliant. So, because, yeah. um, I mean, we have HubSpot as a customer, Microsoft, Salesforce, all these guys, um, and they all use us, right? So we, they basically forced us to be GDPR compliant in Europe. So we have a lot of documentation on that. So get in touch if you want to know more about that. I'll send you an email. 
for sure. Okay, thank you so much. Um, then you had something to 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 final uh, end this webinar. You have a yeah. contest. Please tell Correct. me more. We have a couple, three more minutes. Three more minutes. Should yes. be more than enough. All right. Cool. The contest, very basic, very easy for everybody to do. Okay. Contest is create a 60 to 90 second personal video introducing yourself and explaining what main problem your products or services are solving for customers. That's it. Okay. You can be creative as you want. Send your video to me and to Thais. Okay. And then um, we're actually going to select the best one that we thought made was was most powerful or most original um and we're going to give you a full free one hour workshop for your entire team so whoever you want to involve sales marketing service everybody with all the best practices tips and suggestions to get started with it based on all the best practices that we have and to put some urgency on it deadline is this friday because <laughs> otherwise you're not going to do it Right? If I say it's next week, you won't do it. So try these two. You'll get now in the end here is I'll give you the resources and I'll have additional um, research that I can put in immediately. Just download the Chrome extension. Try it out for yourself. It's literally three clicks. You'll have a video ready to go. The video doesn't have to be perfect. Just be yourself. Introduce yourself. Say what you're doing. Send it to Tyson and me. We'll select the best one. Uh, and if you, even if you're not cho chosen as the best one, it immediately puts you in the motion to start thinking, oh, this is really easy. I can use it in this use case, in this use case, and in that use case. And that's the goal to inspire you to actually start using it. And to put the proof in the pudding, during this webinar, I made a video. Uh, it's already on LinkedIn. It's connected with Yaniv. It's talking to the community, to all my connections about today, if you want a recording and, the, and, and, and this presentation, reach out to me. But also it talks about next week when we have another co-host, another uh, a keynote speaker from LinkedIn who will join us in the next uh, episode of Web's Webinar Wednesday. So you don't have to be Brad Pitt and this feature tool is seriously super easy to use. So within seconds, you will have a video online. And uh, I personally really like it, especially the human to human approach you need to take in consideration. Uh, be yourself. And um, Yaniv, I want to thank you so much um, uh, I really enjoyed this webinar. I'm happy that uh, you took your time to, to share your insights and share your ideas. Um, we see each other soon and uh, hope to see the others next week and the next episode of Web Webinar Wednesday with LinkedIn next time. Perfect. Thank you very all much, right. everybody. Bye -bye. Nice, nice to talk to you all. See you. Have a good day.